Hello, and welcome to this Heroes and Generals Weapons Guide. Today's weapon is the one and only M1 Garand. The M1 is a weapon that first saw production in 1938 and was built all the way up to as late as 1976, with a rebranding in 2001 by Beretta Firearms for the domestic market. The M1 in Heroes and Generals has the following stats. It has a 240 rounds per minute, each shot dealing 48 points of damage, with a reload of 2.8 seconds and a magazine size of 8 rounds. However, like most weapons in Heroes and Generals, the M1 Garand can be modified to become a total powerhouse in both close quarters, medium to long range. If you'd like to know more, please wait till after the montage and you will see the two following setups that I use. Thanks again. But also, don't forget guys, this is just how I modify my M1 Garand. You don't have to modify your weapon the way I do. Remember, play to your strengths, not others. And until then, enjoy the show guys. The average time to kill with a weapon is one shot kill to the head or neck, two or three hits to the body, and up to four or five hits to the arms or legs. Please note that this is with the right mods slash upgrades, so please make sure you modify the weapon accordingly. When modifying your M1 Garand, you must take into account the bloom and or spread of your shots. Yes, this weapon is a semi-automatic, and yes, this weapon does not benefit whatsoever, sadly, from the tight grip perk as tight grip perk only affects automatics and as you can see with my current loadout on this M1 Garand I actually have it set up to use the matched M72 which is the precision slash sniper ammunition I've foregone any kind of scope or optic right now as I've decided to use this weapon primarily for either A hip firing or B shooting on the move or, or C shooting at targets that are moving i.e. drivers co-gunners etc etc for the field trigger I've decided to go uh, with the trigger I've decided to go with the field trigger job as you can see here it does increase the rate of fire but it really doesn't necessarily increase the bloom effect and of course I've gone with the heavy spring to bring the bloom down again yes the heavy spring does somewhat negate the field trigger job but it does bring your groupings much tighter together and I've of course with since the new uh, since the new uh, update, I have decided to add the Scout to S Barrel for that big damage increase. However, alternative, alternative modifications that you can do to the weapon is as follows. You could decide to go with the Bertie Clay Ammo, then go with the Field Adjusted Sights, forego the Trigger, forego the Spring, and still use the Scout. 2S. So, Bertie Clay. Of course, don't forget to always order repair slash fill. Field adjusted sights. And you can also tend to now choose to go with the heavy spring. It will bring your rate of fire immensely down. But your weapon is a complete and total powerhouse. To offset that, you could in fact add the trigger. In this configuration, your weapon at under 75 meters, which is the average intercept range of most uh, submachine guns like the MP40, the Machine Pistol 34, uh, the PPSH40, the PPSH41, etc., etc. Uh, you will actually have the damage increase, which means in theory only two shots will be required on this build Even if the opponent has heavy set silver or gold, you will still only need two shots I personally am going to enjoy my matched M72 Heavy spring field trigger Scout 2 barrel build. As you can see, the grouping is incredibly tight. It's really not that off centered from the main target. And as you can see, it is a flat 75 to 80 damage all the way up to just, I would say, a hair over 100 meters. 
at that range you are looking at engaging some unscoped bolt action sniper rifles and in theory beating them again this build is mostly designed for hip fire and so two shots hip firing you will drop a target 